base cost formula we're going to look at is the first in, first out. We usually call this the FIFO method. Now, here, this method assumes that inventory is sold in the order in which it was purchased. All the inventory items are debited to the income statement as cost of sales first before you go to the new items. Okay. So this means that our closing inventory balance is calculated using the more current prices and probably, well, definitely a much better reflection of the economic circumstances. It's quite a difficult one to maintain some records for though. Let's have a look. So we're going to base an example on the same figures we use for the weighted average. We have a purchase on the 1st of the June for 100 units at 2.3 currency units. Another one on the 15th of June for 50 units at 2.10. Okay. Now, what you'll see is I'm just keeping a column here for each purchase that we go through. So we've done A and we've done B's purchase. The value for purchase A, let's actually put that in here. This is purchase A, purchase B. Now, those purchases, the 100 times 2.3 gives me a value of 230. 50 times 210 gives me... 105 total value of inventory is 335 total inventory units on hand is 150 now we're going to deal with a sale and the sale on the 26th of june is for 75 items what price do i de-recognize inventory and raise cost of sales well i need to go back and look at the first purchase right so the first purchase was 100 units at two point three so now i'm selling 75 that's all going to come out of the purchase from the first of june column a so i'll now take the 230 times 75 gives me a 172.5 cost of sale i'm going to debit the expense credit inventory then i have another purchase and let's call this purchase c on the 29th of june for 120. So I purchased 120 items and this purchase price was 2.5. And the total value added to inventory then is 300. 120 times 2.5. I don't have to worry about averaging costs here. Let's now stop and we add up and we've got 195 units on hand. 25 of those came from our first purchase on the 1st of June in category A. Okay, we had 100 purchased items, we sold 75. The purchase on the 15th of June, we still got all 50 items. And the purchase on the 29th of June, we still got all 120 items. And they are valued, well, 25 times 2,3 plus 50 times 2,10 plus 120 times 2,5 would give me 462.50. Now, when I have a big sale and I'm selling 155 items, I must first go through the older inventory and then move towards the newer inventory. So out of that 155, I'm selling the first 25 out of A. Then the next 50 will come out of the purchases from the 15th of June. And 155 minus 25 minus 50 leaves me with 80 items that will come out of stockpile C being the purchases on the 29th of June. And those will be done 25 times 230 gives me 57. 210 times 50 gives me 105. 80 times 2.5 gives me 200. I then can go and add these up. 462 minus the 57, the 105, and the 200 gives me with 100 closing stock value. And what do I have left on this side? I have 195 minus the 155 gives me 40 items left on hand. And you'll see everything from stockpile A is gone, stockpile P is gone, B, sorry, is gone, and we've only got 40 items left from stockpile C, and that is all therefore left at 2.5. Okay, so the FIFO method, much more accurate, a really great way to show 
the economic reality of our stock values. That is quite a mess to keep track records of. So in reality, most systems rely on a weighted average process, especially computerized systems. But this is what you need to know as a basis. Thank you.